Thank you. I was just wondering when uh, this all took place. Project was completed. Yeah, uh, uh, say Burke, when was it actually uh, activated? Do you recall? Uh, 1205 oh, there on, exactly. <laughs> on uh, November 9th. There you go. Yeah, I was going to say early Marvel November, but George, <laughs> George actually flipped the switch. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, yeah. I was back yeah. in the office and I called him and he happened to be here. And, uh, you know, so, so it's actually a church member that got to see the first electrons yeah. flow, you know, into the grid. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so how do the solar panels work versus what a line energy provides? Yeah, that's one for yeah I can, uh, um, well, the, the, the system on the roof is tied into their electrical panel. Okay. So first it'll provide, if anything's operating lights, air conditioning, whatnot in the church, first it will uh, provide for those loads. If there's not enough solar to provide for what the church is drawing, then Alliance will supplement it. Mm -hmm. And then conversely, like in the middle of the day, if some things are off here, this system can actually produce more power than what they're using. And it actually sort of spins the meter backwards, if you will. Okay. Um, and they're credited at full retail cost. Uh, we signed a contract with Alliance and met, met the guidelines to allow the system to net meter. So it was, it, was actually, it was sized as large as we possibly could under Alliance rules to allow the church to get full retail cost mm -hmm. for any power that goes back. Okay. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure, uh, I, I believe the Wisconsin utilities are still uh, 25, 30% uh, uh, coal-fired generation, you know, more and more it's natural gas, but renewables are pretty, still a pretty small percentage. It is. Uh, definitely much less than what the church is covering with their, their solar arrays. Is about 40, and we are less than 1%. So. Okay, there you go. Okay. Less than 1%. <laughs> yeah, that's the hard Is realization. it really still 40%? I mean, I think I knew it's, that for a few it's, years I ago, think, but you get the impression well, of moving this, away. This year is probably going to be different, but technically 2019 is about 40%. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm working off of. Like so, we almost, still got a long way to go. Working off 11 month old numbers, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> And I mean, at this point, there may be a day, you know, like there is in Germany and parts of California where it's solar is, the grid is so saturated, you know, that there has to be storage elements. Mm -hmm. But at this point, you know, utility electric demands are highest during the day, you know, in the summer when the system's producing the most power. So it's actually, you know, putting power into the grid when it's needed most. How popular are these right now? Uh, well, from my, my perspective, very popular. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, when I, st my brother and I started in uh, 2002, it was a uh, sort of a part-time hobby uh -huh. with, with the goal that someday it would be a viable, you know, way to make a living. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we're up to this year at one point, we had uh, 25 employees and six trucks going out every day and installing. And, and we're not doing utility scale stuff. We're doing, you know, most of our bread and butter is this kind of project, you know, like smaller, uh -huh. um, Businesses, nonprofits, um, you know, they did the homeowners. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, or Oregon just did a um, a new uh, school building. Uh, oh, I wasn't yeah. the project Amazing manager, goal. but we we just about covered the entire roof. 650 kilowatts okay. versus this is uh, about 29 kilowatts. Uh -huh. And uh, for that school. The goal is actually to cover 100% of their electricity on a yearly basis. So um, I think, you know, that's a testament to how cost effective mm -hmm. uh, uh, so solar electric has, has mm -hmm. become. I mean, you see utilities now doing like farms and, and uh, you know, I think for, if you do a financial analysis here on the church, um, admittedly with a lot of incentives, the, uh, the payback period is only about seven years. Forgive me, I'm just writing. No, no problem. Okay. Um, so why why is it important to you guys think the organization for churches and great Um again the churches uh, it's, it's it's too it's, it's too faceted. One is that we consider ourselves to be stewards of this earth that God has uh -huh. God has tasked us with being stewards of, of the earth and protecting our earth. And when you look at reducing your carbon footprint, which is very important in terms of um, 
protecting the earth, this is the number one most impactful way that we can do that is by um, incorporating solar. And then there's just the economic benefit because um, we are it's projected uh, that we'll save about $95,000 over the next 25 years um, in, in operational costs for reduced electric, electric consumption. So it's, it's two pronged. Do you guys have any more projects planned in the future, something like this? Um, it'll, it'll be more a smaller scale. There's other way, things that we can do as a church to reduce our, um, our uh, uh, carbon footprint. But a lot of them have actually been done with our new sanctuary. Uh, with the new roof, with insulation, we have a new um, air conditioner, new heating system. So it's all brand new and higher efficiency. Okay. Uh, so besides the light, the light bulb idea, you know, which is important too. So uh, we'll we'll continue uh, efforts. We're just switching our we'll be switching our focus uh, from solar to uh, other ways to okay. reduce our carbon footprint. I was just going to add that I think a project like this gets a lot of visibility and attention in the community, you know, more broadly, and then also within the church. A lot of times we see, you know, some ripple effect where people are like, like, hey, we have it at our church. I wanted to look at it for my own house and my own business. Yeah, I give a lot of talks, uh, at least I was giving a lot of talks uh, in the community, to churches, to other organizations about climate change. And mm -hmm. one thing that I stress is solar, especially when I talk to other congregations. So I, I tell them our story mm -hmm. and it, it gets them interested. I've had several churches follow up with me and uh, actually, I've actually done Zoom conferences with them. To, to find out more about what they can do to, um, to, to get solar as well. Because to me, it's a no-brainer. What I tell churches is you're losing money not putting solar. You're losing money. So, um, and, but as Burke mentioned, when you have one that does it, then others do it. And, and not only uh, like for churches, but residential. I just noticed in Legend of Bergamot, where I live, there's solar popping up all over the place now. It's, it's just increasing more and more. It seems like once you get one little congregation doing it of houses, then others do it as well. Yeah.